Okay, so back in Flutterflow, let's move to the left-hand side here. Let's create a brand new function. So just choose the add and function. Here is the name that we need. So this is gonna be get calendar for month. That is exactly kind of what the name is that we give it in ChatGPT. And you can see now that on the right-hand side, we now need to kind of set some return values here. So just choose this here. We, de we need to kind of return back the actual data type here. So this is gonna be a list of these calendar days that we actually created. So just go and say is list, choose the type here and say calendar day like that. Now the define argument, we now need to set the input dates again, just as we had in ChatGPT, we're gonna be passing in this input date. Our type needs to be kind of date and time. So I just need to find that here in the list. So here it is, date and time, just choose that. I'm just gonna take off the nullable because we're always gonna be passing in the date and that's all that we need to do. Once that is created, now this is the pretty well much what you saw in ChatGPT. We can just come here now and we can just right click uh, and sorry, I could just uh, uh, sort of do a paste there and put that into my, my actual function itself. Now, if I hit the save function, you can see now that we've kind of got this pretty formatting that's happened. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign that Flutterflow has interpreted our code correctly. And uh, once that's done, we can hit the little compile option here. It's going to quickly compile that. And then what we can then do, we can quickly test that function. Now, we're not going to get much coming back, but we certainly should see a list of objects come back. If I go to test function, I've got a date here that's set. If I hit run, you'll see here that that function will play out and hopefully we should see a list of there we go calendar day structs now if I count all of these up here it will it will take in it will it should be returning back the right number that would equal the how many days we've currently got in February 2024 but that's good that's a good sign that we've got everything that we need so now that is done we've got the little check here that means we're all fully valid and compiled that's all that we need to do so we can now head back over to Flutterflow now and we can now start calling out to this particular custom function. Okay, so we're back in then our Canada component. You can see here that I've kind of renamed all of the widgets here, which again, as I said before, will be in the full example. But you can see here the grid view. This is the bit that's going to kind of do all of the magic for us with that custom function. So with the grid view selected, let's move over to here to the generate a kind of dynamic children just with that selected here. Give it a variable name. We're just going to call this one calendar. Okay, it's going to represent each kind of day here. Move over to the value and we can then go down to the bottom here and we can then choose the custom function functions option here. And you can see here, this is the one that we've kind of got available to us. It's the only one we've got in our application. So just choose get calendar for month. And then we then need to pass in an input date. Now we don't actually have that input date at this moment in time, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of choose the selector here and I'm going to put a global property in it. I'm going to choose the current time itself. Just hit confirm. And that's all that we need to do. Just hit confirm there. And if I have saved that, we're going to get this little prompt that comes up. Just hit okay here and it'll kind of get this ghosted look. Look. Now, this is just, just kind of to, to telling us that this is now a dynamic grid. What we now need to do is we now need to hook this day text onto the actual date that's coming back from our list of calendar dates. So let's move over to here to the text option. Let's just select that. And I'm going to choose the uh, the actual date format, date time from Unix. Just uh, choose that here. Now we need to select the Unix time stamp, select that. And of course, here's our calendar item. Just select that. And we're going to say a data structure field. Select the, uh, the actual value here, the drop down, and choose a calendar date because that's what we're interested in. Just move down here. Time unit, just choose the seconds that's fine and that's just hit confirm there or oh, just need to put a zero sorry always need to put a default value in just hit confirm and the time unit again is going to be seconds itself but what we can do now is we can now come down here and we can actually say date and time format so choose that now we're only interested in the actual day itself so with that selected choose where it says date time format options now none of the options are available here I'm not interested in any of these but I can go to custom but but the reason why I'm doing that is is because I just want to get that day out here you can see here I just want something like 24 to come out which is just a D so if I go to custom I can then move down here I can say well just bring me out the D like that to represent the day hit confirm and then that should be all that we need so if I was to now kind of fire this up I'm hoping that what we'll, we should see is because we've hard-coded the February date in we should see that all of the February dates get displayed let's try this out let's give this a quick test in test mode and let's see if we've broken anything but let's uh, let's give this a go Okay, so here we are in test mode. Everything is looking pretty good for us. You can see here that we've got a good representation of our calendar. Now, this doesn't do anything. This has got the hard-coded February in, but at least it's given us that general sense that we're heading in the right direction. So now let's head over to Flutterflow and let's carry on with the build of adding more of the interactive elements into this particular calendar. 
Okay, so next up, let's now create a component state variable to track the date that has actually been selected by the user. We're going to need that very shortly because we're going to use that with inside our component parameters. So what we need to do is with the calendar component there selected, move to, over to this option here, state management, hit add on the component state, and we're just going to call this one selected date like that. Now the type is just going to simply be the date and time and just hit confirm. Once we've got that set up, of course, we can now move over to then component parameters and get those configured themselves. So we're gonna, we are gonna want to pass in the actual current month that we want our calendar to be displayed. So this is gonna be called input date like that. This is gonna be a type of date and time again. Hit the, uh, make sure it's required here. Hit add parameter, let's add in another one here. So this is gonna be called initial selected date. So chances are that um, uh, if you're using this um, in your own application, you're gonna to want to probably preset a date. So it could be that you might, for example, have this hooked onto a database. You're pulling a date and time out of your database. You might wanna set the selected date. So that's what it's there to do. We can take required off. We don't need to worry about that. We're gonna put some conditional logic in here very shortly to say, well, if look, if you pass me in initial selected date, then go and set that date. Otherwise, just completely ignore it. But we'll come back and do that very shortly. We're going to add one more parameter in here. Now, this is going to be when the user selects the actual date, we're going to then want to pass back to our calling page that this is the date the user has selected. Okay, that's what makes this a truly unique component to work very independently. So with this, we just need to set the parameter name here on select date action, just like that. Now the type is gonna be an action itself, just choose action. And we're gonna take the little required off there because we don't necessarily need to use it, but we're gonna use it in this case. And we're gonna add in an action parameter. And we're just gonna call this parameter name selected date. And the type here is just gonna be a date and time. So just choose date and time. And that's all that we need to do. And then very, very shortly, we'll come and configure that. When the user clicks on the actual date itself, we'll come in, call that action, we'll set that action parameter and then we'll call execute the callback as well. So once that's done, hit confirm, and that's everything kind of set up for us from a state kind of management perspective and also as well our component parameters. We've got a little error at the top there because we've made one of these values required, which is the input date, which we need to pass into this particular component. So don't worry about that. We'll come back and do that very, very shortly. Okay, so let's configure up then the actions for when the user hits that one of the actual days itself. So here's the grid view here. We're gonna choose the actual container and we're gonna move over to the actions up here, open up the action flow editor. And the first thing that we need to do is set that component state variable to have the selected date. So choose add action. And up here, we're gonna go and do a look for component state here, update the component state, set the fields. And we're gonna choose a selected date because that's obviously what's in the component itself. So choose selected date and we're gonna say, okay, well, what value do you now want to set myself to? So we're going to pass in here, we're going to say set value, we're going to choose the value here, and of course this is going to be the calendar item, because remember this is actually in the grid itself. So we know that we have the calendar item here, choose this option here to say the data structure fields. Again, it's going into that structure and we're gonna say it's the calendar date. So we know that every single one we have will be the calendar date. And of course we can now set that and that's all that we need to do. Next up, we then can execute that particular callback. Choose plus here, add action, and just type in execute here and choose execute callback. Select the only callback that we got here, which is the one that we just created called on select date action. And we're gonna pass in that selected date that we just set we're gonna pass that in here. So choose this here, and we're gonna go down to then the component state, or just sorry, scroll down here to the component state here, just move down, and it's the selected date that we need to select. So just choose selected date, hit confirm, and that's all nicely set. Now once that is then set, of course now our component is now has the ability to now pass that value back out to the home page. So let's quickly go over to the home page and let's now also set up, just for tracking purposes, a page state variable here. So we can move over to the right hand side here. Let's in fact just put the home page selected. Move to hit this option here called a state management here. Just choose add field. Let's just call this one the same as we previously selected date. And this of course is going to be then a date and time like that. Hit confirm. 
So what we can now do then is we can just choose and select our calendar component. And just down here, you can see we've now got this on select date action. So this is that kind of that callback happening. We can open up the action flow editor, hit the add action. And what we can now do is we can then do the state again. So we can say update the page state on this occasion, set the field, which is going to be the selected date. This is what we've just created with the set update type. We say set value and we say, okay, well, where is this value coming from? Well, it's just select that and it's the callback parameters this is the key bit. The callback parameter will be then the selected dates. We're passing that value down from the component into the page state variable. And we can now use that with inside that particular page in however we would like to use it. So in this particular example, we can just put the little sort of, sort of date, sort of time sort of label at the bottom here. And that will show you the, the kind of the selected date. Just hit confirm. And that's all that we need to do. Hit close. So that is good for us. So all we need to do now then is set that initial input date here. That's going to represent the current uh, calendar month. So just choose this. So we're just going to set this for this particular example to then be one of the global properties, the current time. So just going to select this particular month, but in my case will be February. So just hit confirm here. Once that's done, the little error at the top will disappear because that was a required component parameter. That's now gone. So we're in a good position now. Now what we can do now very, very simply now is with inside the page container here, we're going to want to display a little text field just just so we can kind of see exactly what is actually being sort of selected. So just with the text selected there, just move up to the text option up here. And we're going to want to then choose the page date variable. So we're just going to choose the selected date like that. And we're going to want to kind of do some date time formatting. So just choose date time formatting here. Choose this option here. We can choose something here that represents maybe just this one here. This would be fine. Saturday, February the 24th. That's what hopefully what we should see. Hit confirm. And then hopefully now we'll be fire this up, we should be able to select a date and then see that magically change as we choose different dates. Let's go and test that now. Okay, so here we are in test mode. Let's try selecting a date here. Excellent. We can see here now we've got the callbacks working fine. We've got that value that's appearing outside of our component into our home page, and we're displaying the selected date here. Now, of course, visually, we're not going to see a lot going on because we haven't sort of set any of that up. We're going to come and do that very, very shortly. Let's quickly move on now. Let's get all of these updated here. We don't want to see Hello World. They want to see the month and want to see the year. Let's quickly go do that now. Oh, oh, oh.